everyone, and welcome back for another Go Math la Math lesson. Today is Math Lesson 6.6 .6 in the fourth grade Go Math unit, and we are going to be comparing fractions. Okay, let's write that down. Comparing fractions using benchmarks. Using benchmarks. Now, Woo, that's on there. Now, I know we have compared fractions before, but this word benchmark just really throws us for a loop sometimes. We really don't know what's going on there. So we're going to go ahead and explain what benchmarks are before we try to compare fractions with them. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way right here. And let's talk about benchmark fractions. When talking about benchmark fractions, so we have benchmark fractions. Essentially, they are fractions that just allow us to kind of do fractions in our head. and They're just easy ones to think about. So benchmark fractions, for example, would be like one half. If we were to draw this and take one half of it, that would be one half. It's a really easy fraction to identify with. It's a, it's, that's why it's called it's a benchmark fraction. We understand one half. If we were to take one third, same thing, same concept, except we cut it into three equal pieces rather than two equal pieces. And another one that is uh, pretty easy for us to get our heads around is one fourth. Essentially, we draw one half and then break it down into four pieces, and now we have one fourth. So again, benchmark fractions are just num fractions that allow us to understand the size of a whole and a piece and kind of just work together in that sense. So now you might be wondering, how does this help me compare fractions? Well, let me tell you, you'd be quite surprised. So let's go ahead and make all that go away. I know, I make my own sound effects. It's cool. I'm awesome. Okay, so I've got a word problem for, me, for you. From, from the Go Math book. So it says David made a popcorn snack. He mixed, let's get right here on the board, he mixed five eighths of a gallon. So five eighths of a gallon uh, of popcorn. So let's just put of popcorn, just so we know what we're working with. So we have five eighths of a gallon of popcorn and half a gallon oops, gallon, of dried apple rings. We'll just put apple rings. We don't need to know they're dried. Not as important as the numbers themselves. Did he use more dried apple rings or more popcorn? Well, these fractions are not, they don't, they don't have common denominators. So I'm going to use my benchmark fractions to help create a better understanding of what's going on. First things first, I'm going to draw two bars. These are two holes currently, but I'm going to cut them up into pieces and you'll see how this works in a second. So I'm going to, this is my first fraction strip. Again, one half is a benchmark fraction. So I have one half and this is also one half, right? Well, guess what? I'm going to cut this one in half, but then I'm going to cut each one of these halves into four equal pieces. So I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces, which means I have one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth. We're going to keep going. One eighth, one eighth and one eighth. Now that we have one half, let's go ahead and shade in our half. So that's how much he has of the dried apple rings. Let's go ahead and do the five eighths. So we have one, one one eighth, two one eighth, three one eighth, four one eighth, five one eighth. 
Now, if we look at our fractions, we see that our 1 8th actually goes past our 1 half. Well, in figuring out which one we had more of, we're doing a comparison problem. So the problem would look like this. 5 8 compared to 1 half. And the answer to the question would be that 5 8 is greater than 1 half. So again, when a number is greater than, we make the alligator symbol face the bigger number. But to answer, answer the question, David used more popcorn than he did of the dried apple rings. And just like that, we compared fractions using a benchmark fraction. So by looking at the benchmark fraction, we were able to tell if our other fraction was bigger or smaller. And that is the goal today. So this is the problem, but let's ask a few more questions about this problem. Let's go ahead and I'm going to erase a little bit of this stuff. So if you need it, pause the video. If not, then watch me make it disappear. Okay. So if you're following along in GoMath, uh, the question below this says, write five fractions that are equivalent to one half. So let's actually, let's erase all of this right now. Let's go ahead and work with some equivalent fractions first. So it says write five fractions that are equivalent to one half. So we have one half and now we want equivalent fractions, equivalent fractions. And pardon my, pardon my handwriting. I just, you know, sometimes it's not the best. So we need one, two, three, four, five fractions that are equivalent to one half. Well, again, if we're finding common denominators, we could do one half times two over two, which would equal two over four. That would be equivalent to one half. We could do, I'm gonna get all kinds of colorful, colorful, ooh, colorful here, so be ready. We could do one half times three over three. And again, I'm multiplying by a whole. If you don't know what a whole is, I'll have another video for that right now, but Again, we've, we've gone over this in the past, we're doing this now, we're finding common denominators and making sure that our, our fraction size doesn't change, so we multiply it by a whole. So we get three times one equals three, three times two equals six, three sixths is also an equivalent fraction. Let's do one half times Four over four, we get four eighths. Four eighths is an equivalent fraction. How about, I'm running out of colors. One half times five over five. Sorry, this color is so light. We get five tenths. Oops, that's not times, that is equals. So five tenths is an equivalent fraction. And then let's do another one for fun. Let's do one half, again, sorry about the light color, one half times 10 over 10 equals 10 twentieths, which that is also an equivalent fraction. Now, what is the relationship that we can find between our numerators and denominators in all of these equivalent fractions? Well, since we're using the benchmark fraction of one half, all of the denominators are gonna be double the numerators. And let me write that down. We have all denominators, denominators are double I almost wrote times two. Double the numerator. Or another way we could look at it, because again, our fraction is one half, 
Let's write it up top. Don't mind my mess up here. We have all numerators. Are half of the denominator. So it depends on how you look at the fraction, but both statements are true. All numerators are either one half of the denominator, or all denominators are double the denu the the numerator. The denominator. Either way, we end up with one half every time. So again, if you're following along into the in the uh, Go Math book. Uh, we would be moving on to question two. Question two is going to be how many eighths are equivalent to one half? Well, if the question asks how many eighths are equivalent to one half, we already have it written down right here, and it's a whopping four eighths. Four eighths are equivalent to one half. So it says for question three, how can you compare five eighths and one eighth without using a model? Well, guess what? If you know that 4 eighths is equal to 1 half, then you know 5 eighths is bigger than 4 eighths. Therefore, 5 eighths is bigger. And let me erase all this and I can explain that a little bit better. So, with all that work we just did, we found out that 1 half is equal to 4 eighths. Our original problem says 5 eighths compared to 1 half. Again, if we already know that, oops, if we already know that 1 half is equal to 4 eighths, so let's say this number is now 4 eighths. Let's put the 4 eighths over here. We know that 5 eighths is bigger. So we're going to put our greater than symbol Facing this way, 5 eighths is greater than 1 half. And that's the answer to our question. So we can avoid all that extra work just by understanding our benchmark fractions and understanding how they work. Okay. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and erase this. We're going to move into another problem so we can have a better understanding of what is going on. Okay. So again, if you're following along in the book, I am turning the page and moving on to the next part. So this problem says, a family hiked the same mountain trail. Evie and her father hiked five twelfths of the trail before they stopped for lunch. So let's write that down. We have five twelfths. Let's write it. Oops. Do, 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 do. Got to get my stuff out of the way here. We have... 5 twelfths of the trail. And then Jill and her mother hiked 9 tenths of the trail before they stopped for lunch. So now we also have 9 tenths. So let's put 9 tenths right here. 9 tenths. And then the question is, who hiked farther before lunch? Well, this is a comparison problem. So let's go put that circle right there because we're going to compare it and put our greater than or less than symbol in there. And in doing so, let's compare them both to the benchmark fraction of one half. And this time we're going to draw a number line. Okay, so I'm actually going to draw two number lines. First things first, I'm going to draw an arrow right here. All the way over, an arrow right there. And then same thing with a little bit of space so I have some room to write. Just like that. Now... Both lines are going to start at 0 and end at 1, and they will have 1 half in the middle. Again, your question may be, but Mr. Edwards, 1 half isn't one of the fractions I'm working with. Why on earth would I use 1 half? Because we're going to use this as our benchmark fraction. We're going to use this to be able to compare these numbers, okay? So our first line, we're going to split up into twelfths. So I'm going to use purple because I use purple to write the number and we're going to represent it that way. So I know to get this into 12 equal pieces, 
I need to do one, two, three, four, five. And then this is actually six twelfths. So look, we have one twelfth, two two twelfths, or two one twelfths, three one twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths. And this will be six twelfths, so I'm going to put that right on the half. Then we have seven twelfths, eight twelfths, oops, nine twelfths, ten twelfths. 11 twelfths and then our one is actually 12 twelfths because that's our whole number so I put those on top just to kind of represent them okay now our next number line is going to be split up into tenths so we need to go ahead and split it up so we have one two three four one two three four and then the reason why I only put four lines is because these ones right here are the fifth so let me show you one tenth two tenth three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, ten tenths. Okay? So now, we're going to mark these numbers on their number lines. So we're going to take five twelfths, and we're going to put a big old purple circle right there. And then we're going to take 9 tenths and put a big old purple circle right there. So, now we need to go back to comparing these problems. Well, first things first. We see on our number line that 5 twelfths is less than 1 half. If we were to do that comparison problem, that's what it would look like. And also... Down here, we see that 9 tenths is greater than, oops, greater than 1 half. So because 9 tenths is greater than 1 half and 5 twelfths is less than 1 half, 9 tenths is actually greater than 5 twelfths. So 5 twelfths is less than 9 tenths. Because 5 twelfths is smaller than 1 half, or as you can see on the number line, 5 twelfths is on the lower side of 1 half, while 9 tenths is on the higher side of 1 half. So by understanding where they are compared to 1 half, we know how they are compared to each other. Okay? So that is how you compare fractions using a benchmark fraction such as 1 half. Again, you could use fractions like one fourth, one third, really any fraction that you have a strong understanding with, you could use to compare fractions. However, today we're just gonna be working with the number one half, or the fraction one half. That way, it doesn't confuse us too much. So today we're just gonna work with one half, but that is how you compare fractions using benchmark fractions.